Jehova Malak, Ola Mola Mata. Jehova Malak, Yame, Herakis. Jehova Gadola, Makari and Tios. Jehova Eronai, Jehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Panta Kreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Elda et Jehova, Yel Yamana Jehova. Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Panta Kreta. Baslios Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Jehova the Bar Halal, Elohim the Bar Halal. Jehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Geber. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion Nimahagion Panta Kreta, Gadol Gadol Geber. Jehova Ishmal Kam, Jehova Shamma. Yel Nakum Jehova. El Nakum Yapa Natsak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triembos Yehova Isus Christos Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Geber Mororosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Ilay Lai Shalut Yehova Malak Yehova Malak Olam Olam Ad Jehova Eloheno, Jehova Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Geburra. Zoan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes. Dikaesune, and Jesus Christos, Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Panta Greta, Gadol Gadol, Geburra. Jehova Ihe Elohim, Jehova Ihe Elohim. Ilay Lai Shalut, Jehova Malak. Jehova Malak, Jesus Christos, Gadol Gadol, Geber. Derek Emanabakar, Mishfat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim. Is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing how much of the man has been absolute failure to the will of Lord God, the Father's thinking, just purely because haven't able to build up their reasonings based upon the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Christians who are thinking themselves they can be saved without growing up to become grammateers they will end up in the standards of weeping, BK of Matthew 22 in verse number 13 and 14, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Weeping purely because their bodies have never been able to become grammatious, program-oriented in this life. 
and gnashing because they haven't been able to build up the great and unique will of Lord God the Father to be established in this church age. The two things what we can look in verse 13 of Matthew 22, weeping, Thomas, the Greek word which emphasizes saying to be BK, B-E-K-A-Y, and that it shows their body was never grammatious program to the Lord my God. And the word gnashing is called to be brugmas. And the meaning of the word brugmas is nothing but naham. And that is to growl, suffer, ground, because their blood is never having to realize the truth. And besides that, if we can take the word, the origin bruko, it emphasizes, followed by that naham, they have this word called to be karak, which is, if we can go back and look and analyze their entire lifestyle, the way how they have built up that wall of fortification and their thought process and what we can understand from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, they are never able to be the truth to reside in them, no priority for the truth to be reigning in them. So they'll be having that gnashing. Brugmas, Bruko, Naham, followed by the word Karak. Many Christians who don't grow up to look upon the standards of what the intention of Lord God the Father is, they will be into the standards of what we can call as outer darkness. And the meaning of the word over here for darkness is again called to be Scotia, we know that. And this kotia, if we can look further in the Hebrew, it's called to be kosek. And that kosek is nothing but their brethren, where the people who haven't grown up by building up a wall of fortification in the thought process as grammatious program to the Lord God. So, dear brethren, how much of your time you're really intending to spend? day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you have been there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you will truly make up your time to learn the Lord's plan. And the Lord's plan is very, very simple. It is called for you all to resolve this angelic conflict by judging the angels. And the reason of your birth is to witness this truth. Anyhow, if you don't witness the truth, you know what we can define as success. What you speak, that you do in real life, that is called to be success. For Christ, O oh Lord of oh God, great success is when, when you obey his commandments and do it in practical way of life. So witnessing the truth is success, provided when you walk according to that truth. The same thing over here for us as well. You shall not be in weeping and gnashing of the teeth in the outer darkness. Then simply learn Matthew 13, 52 to join as disciples and grow up into grammatiers. Simply learn that. You'll realize what is success in your life. Forget about the thinking of these people, what they think, what his life is all about. They can't understand until unless they come to meet that gate. To know that there is God. And we know there is only one Lord of a God, Yehovah Elohim, called to be Yehovah Ekonai. And Yehovah Ekad. Yehovah Adahenu Yehovah Ekad. Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, is one Lord. He is the only one Lord of a God. And He reveals to mankind what is His fate if He would walk by obeying the demands of the word of Lord God accurately. So, dear brethren, if your reasonings are not based 
upon the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. You are rotting your own lives on this earth and for sure you will be ending up in weeping and gnashing of your teeth in the hell forever because your body is never able to become the intended plan of Lord God the Father in going and making to be disciples of the Lord my God because your body hasn't been able to become gramatious for Christ so dear brother use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound and in the matchless marvelous grace of the Lord our God one more day being renewed in our lives though we don't deserve for it or earn for it or work for it that graciously Lord God the Father grants us to learn his mind so let's come back and look what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory in his matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious grace we shall continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of his work infinitely divine holy father once again coming into the grace of Lord to be mindful about the plan of you to be a born slave of Lord as we were able to read yesterday like Esther, Paul, Ruth emphasizing to give our lives to say Lord we are unprofitable slaves and that which is our duty to be done we have to do it and that O oh Father many people are not able to realize why you have given us this flesh why you have given us this plan to understand in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit alone and become what is your intention for us to be on this earth yet O Father in this marvelous grace of your time given for us to remain in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by the message which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in it will past to the praise of your glory in a matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious grace in Christ's name we ask for it Lord Amen every day dear brethren the decisions that you're making up the decisions that you're taking if not been found in the original thought of Lord God the Father to be taken from the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. You are making up your decisions which are contrary to the word of Lord God. And that makes you all to realize miseries on this earth. The intention of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is that it is his desire, it is his will none to be perished but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory the full knowledge the epinosis knowledge of his glory and when none to be perished but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory what a great inculcation of plan we have on this earth to be performed then how much more we have to make our ourselves to be available for the will of Lord God the Father in going and doing the pale wonders of his glory on this earth how much more we ought to be available because over here when we look upon this great passage many are called few are chosen it really pricks our heart why they are still not able to look upon the separation in this life from the viewpoint of man to the viewpoint of God from the viewpoint of man they follow rituals without reality with the viewpoint of Lord God there abideth nothing but 
reality. And all the rituals have been put off. In that reality plan of Lord Kardavada, it speaks every day what you have to assemble yourselves in looking and judging the Lord's mind accurately. The reality plan, what we're going through every day in the Lord's mind, if we are going through or if you are going through, then you will not have time for silly, stupid things. You will not worry what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, whom to impress, why to impress, where to impress. All these things, what they have been there for you as number one priority, will change. Because the reality would be only one thing. Fulfill the desire of Lord God the Father, because we are his now bond slaves. Eyes look upon him, ears wait upon him. Mind to do his will. Hands which are ready to perform anything what Lord God the Father intends. And legs which are swift to go and make up the things which the intention of Lord God the Father is all about to be made known to these people. So here, dear brother, and you look. A born slave, a true born slave to Christ. And his intentions are very, very essential for us. Because we have to make up first to be differentiated from rituals over reality. Rituals make you not even to come closer to the standards of what we can call in simple terms. They will not even make up for you all to be closer to come and examine yourselves. Are you still even at the outer court of the tabernacle? Because when we are called to be the tabernacle of the living Lord of a God, called to be the temple of the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, indwelling in us and worship Him in spirit and biblical truth, and make up our every word and thought in our body as a living sacrifice to Christ. If we haven't come even closer to look, what is the temple? If you haven't looked upon that, at least coming to realize what is the temple for you. At least that basic structure of the temple. At least come and look upon that beautiful gate, the 20 cubit gate, which is almost all 40 feet, having on a white background the blue color, the purple color, the scarlet color. It will be so attractive, white signifies purity, righteousness, and holiness of the Lord of a God. The color blue signifies the very reason of the flesh why Lord God the Father has given you this body. It goes to signify you that the very reason why are you having this flesh, it says you have to grow up into gravity, yes. You have to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's why when you come to stand at the gate, you need to look which color is there blue. What is the significance of that blue? Lord of glory, heaven of glory, all the sky blue. Metha can look upon that. But the word over here in the pictographical representation, when we consider in Exodus chapter 26, again in verse number 36, the color of that entrance, he would say the word blue, it is called as Tekelat. The strong code number 8504, Tekelat. And the meaning of that is, you have to make up your body to be Kramatia's program unto the Lord God, no matter whatever it is. And in return, your body should go and make disciples of all the nations as Christ, O Lord of God, gives that commission. People may think, 
It's only for those disciples. If you're not a Christian, if you're not a true disciple-oriented Christian, then forget the tag of Christianity for your life, though you may have Christian names of the great prophets and apostles in your mind. Because at your home, being a Christian country, you may name someone Paul, you may name someone Peter, you may name someone Jeremiah, Daniel, you know, there are many twins like that. You may name them, but if you're not a disciple-oriented Christian, then simply forget that you're Christian at all. It's not just for the disciples that commission has been given, it's for every individual believer, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In that sense, meant to say, every individual believer who has taken this form of flesh, at the day when we can look of John 1, 11 and 12, not being born by the will of men of flesh, they have been born by what? By the will of Lord God. And this is more essential for us. They have been born by the will of Lord God. Nothing else than that. So dear brethren, here you can look the color blue. It reminds the purpose of your body. The sole purpose of your body. The reason why you breathe in this body. The pure white background. It calls for purity and righteousness. That's what we are when we come to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. By faith alone, in Christ alone. Now, you are no longer the old man. All things are passed away, but are put upon the new man. New man called to be Christ. Therefore, what happens over here? When you put upon the new man as Christ, the old things are removed out. And when the old things are removed out, what has been left over? You have been made kinekatesis, something of a new quality that did not exist earlier. And from there on, what are you going to do now? You'll have to look and concentrate on the color blue. And that color blue will teach. We have to grow up into grammatious level of thinking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have to become that which has been called to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's the color blue. And then afterwards he says, if you have been born in this flesh, you have been called to grow up into grammatias, then how much of your time you are investing in the stupidity of this life? That's what you need to look. How much of your time you're really investing? The stupidity of your life. Just look. You know, in order to become a grammatious level of thinking, for example, if you want to become as a disciple, a disciple who has been reading the Bible upon his knees, just look the time and the schedule how he's going to be. He doesn't be the smartphone every time. He would simply throw off the phone because his time is to read the word of Lord God. And there he doesn't stop. He's not happy with that. Because he's getting all the time disturbances. So he would make himself to an isolated place. A place where there can be no disturbance at all. So what does he do now? He comes to that place. He switches off his phone and he goes to kneel down and he reads the Bible. And then when he's reading the Bible, he will come to his mind to say, every day I have to make up my time for this. So what does he do now? He's going to organize the other things for him in that comparison of the time which he has to give for the word of Lord God accurately every day. So how does he do now? He would say, avoid this. Prioritize your list. People who are watching serials, he may think, now I don't have time to watch that stupid things. I have to read the Bible, so he'll keep aside. Chit-chatting, social media network. There are some fools, even you can say, looking upon the way how taking a snow trip, putting all the dress of the things like this Eskimos, and then having to wave your hand or taking a picture of that, and you think it will be better for me if I post in the Facebook. And then people would like, subscribe. You will not have so much of time to look that vanity stuff. So what if he takes a picture in a snowball club? So what if she takes a picture on a high mountain to say that I have been so precious over here? 
So what? What are you going to do with that? So you don't have time for all those stupid stuff. You don't have time to travel unnecessary to look upon the world. What the seven wonders or the eight wonders of the world, what they associate with. You don't have time to mind others' business for you. You would be happening only one thing, to mind your own business, because you have now a commitment to finish your Bible. And what's robbing you from there? Not to read the Bible, that's what you analyze. Not to give a time, that's what you analyze. Is it the entertainment over edification? What's that that's hindering you? Your necessary stuff of talk. And you're not mindful of that. So the very reason of your body, when you come to meet and look upon that blue color, really, dear brethren, you will not know why you are given this body. Your body should grow up into grammar tears. I'm not telling you not to. You have to just read the Bible. For reading the Bible, we are looking at the circumstances or the things that are hindering you or your obligations. I'm asking you to inquire your obligations, which is causing you not to read the Bible, because when you read the Bible, you're able to read, as you can say, between a wife and a husband, or a lover and a lover girl, wife and a girlfriend, what you can call. If you love the girl intensely, you're loving to read her thought process and her mind. If you love Master, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're reading the Bible, you're loving to read His thought process which is designed for us. So as you fall in your first love, you don't have time for anything, isn't it? You forgot the teachings of your parents, the school teachers or boyfriends or friends with you because you want to just isolate yourself to that girl whom you love. So you want to look what she likes, what she wears, what she's thinking. If you're not able to get the things pertaining to get that accurate information of her, you'd love to use some mediators. Nowadays, you're going to get that information in the Facebook so that you can understand what she is, what she is not. Her psychopath way of thinking, what she posts the posts, her quotations, what she writes, and all these things, you know. You can understand her and you can say, wow, she's such a girl or she's such a man. And now you'll think whether to continue with her or you want to break up. Or if she matches you or if he doesn't match you. The things that which have to be changed in that, you know, the simple logic for a human being I'm talking to you all. The same thing what we are looking over here for you. Christ our Lord of God is that Bible and everyone has to bow down to that. He is your right man. He is your husband. His thinking is always truth and veracity. He is not a man to lie or change his words. He is all the same. Jesus Christ our Lord of God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And he goes to give. Transform your thinking, metamorphomize your thinking to my standards, to my thinking. That's what your life is. Metamorphomize your standards to my thinking, to my standards of living. Metamorphomize. You're loving me, then look upon my thought. And then as the way you find an illiterate girl or illiterate boy and yet she loves her and he gives a letter to her and she doesn't know how to read. So what does she do now? She goes to a man who's able to read and interpret that and explain that, isn't it? Because she has love on that man. The same thing over here. You're going to look if you have love upon that man who Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You have your letter called to be the Bible, the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. You go through the bona fide gifted pastor teacher under the, under the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 
and then you're going to become to acquaint with that. That's the duty of the pastor teacher. When you're reading the Bible, you can't understand it. You need to require a pastor teacher to tell you how it is, what it is, to the concept of isagogics, categories, and exegesis of the Lord's mind. The ice concept, what we call. And then afterwards, we look, emphasizing how well you need to plan. How well you need to plan. So what does you do? What, what do you do now? So you say there are so many things which my husband loves or girl loves. So I have to change my thinking to that because I need to have a harmony with him or with her. So you try to change. Now things with harmony with Christ you need to change. He's always the time called to be the truth. Therefore he says, put on the new clothes. The new clothes of Endicai, Sude, Kai, Hosea, is this Aletheia, Ephesians 4, 24. And now daily, slow by slow, from milk to bread, from bread to strong meat. Day by day, you're going to renovate your thinking, you're transforming your thinking, you're changing your thinking. Day by day, you're going to change. Earlier you were such and such, but now we change. You know, this is what we are just simply talking about. What are the, what are the hindrances or obligations that you are not able to read the Bible? These are the very fundamental basic things. Because you should have a zeal and a desire to know why you are on this earth. What for this body is being given? Don't look already into the cycles of men in the previous terms of history or in the present. <coughs> because already man has spent his time in research. In Immanuel Kant, if you can look upon the great historian, he says, We learn from history. We learn nothing from history. That's the best thing. What a man who has been in research of man, why he has been kept on the earth, can conclude. We learn from history. We learn nothing from history. The greatest man who can ever be in the terms of saying that he doesn't believe in God. Because there is nothing of a great value for you to think that could be really great. If you want to know what is your life, what is your purpose, why have you been there in this flesh, you cannot just end up like these beasts or these animals. At least today, the world celebrates called to be the Palm Sunday because they get all the branches. If not the Palm branches, something of the branches, the makeup, make up that cross, keep it till the next year preserved. And that Tuesday before that Ash Wednesday, they want to burn it off. On the Ash Wednesday, they want to put up on the rituals to say, the way how we have peace, you know, they come in a donkey for peace, they come in a horse for war. So they say it's a peace. And the whole year we preserve that. And now we repent again for 40 days, that will be for the next Ash Wednesday for them. Till the land season could finish and begin with the Holy Week, they'll be still commemorating or commemorating the same thing. And then what they do, they come back again with the palm brands next year and they think they have done the great things to the Lord. No, dear brother, not at all. It's not your Lent season to repent. It's not your ash Wednesday to burn off your palm branches today. It's not the thing what you can say like a donkey which has been taken up or taking up my Lord. No one has sat on that. It's not like that. It's not that rituals. You're not like that donkey which has no meaning so that you can die without knowing your creator. That is donkey is usable in the passages when they look Balaam incident. Donkey has been compared in Egypt 
in uh, the book of Ezekiel for the works of idolatry worship, what these people they have been traversing under every green tree. Because their issue is like donkey, he says. And the word what he compares Israel is a traversing donkey under every green tree. At least this animal or the beast what we are looking, it has been useful for something at least. But man on the face of the earth is not able to realize how much we have been far away to know our Creator. We have been very, very far away from our Creator. Because many people are not able to realize why you have been given the Word of God. Why have you been given this great reality to understand the Lord's mind? And they would simply make up their life to end up as the world goes on to say, as the things what they are enjoying, looking into the life cycles of man, into the history, the present, the past, and they go on to look and say, you are born, you are born like such and such. The divisions of the family classes, high class, low class, middle class, or you think you live a life of royalty or X, Y, Z. And you still don't even realize or understand that the inner man of you has to be fed or well secured to look back into eternity. And these things have not been taught. These things have not been told. These things have not been making up the point that we should make you all to live on the face of the earth. You don't have any meaning at all why you have been given this life for you. So you just think. You are making up our life to such and such standards. So we will be happy for this, we will be happy for that. No dear brother, not at all. Look upon your creator. What his intention is all about for you. If you can look upon your creator to know there is someone who made you. He has given us some plan, some document in our hands called to be the Bible, then read it. The word for reading the Greek anagonisco to one another and exegete the passages. And you can't understand that. You can't understand those passages. If it were not by the bonafide gift of the pastor teacher, to train you up every day and look you to understand that you are something greater than these animal beasts, what they have been compared for us in the Bible. You are something far greater than these animal beasts. That's what you have been called. Animal beast. What for you have been kept? Don't die like those animals which die without having no meaning at all. We have something great to do. We have something unique to perform because we have been made in the image of God. <coughs> As many people don't understand about that and they think their body is for just like the life cycle that has been running in this life. And they don't come to look upon what is the intention of Lord God through that Bible. They don't come to look. They don't come to read. They don't come to understand. Besides that, much obligations for you. Obligation by the things pertaining to your own soul which says no to doctrine. Who are going to listen for such sort of a long sermon? No one, isn't it? On the other hand, when you're watching your TikTok or shorts or YouTube shorts, if it is a boring one, even for a 30 seconds, you just pass it out to remove. Because you say it's useless. You give her a four-year-old girl, she'll judge that and she'll say it's useless. It's not worth, so she'll throw it off. You don't even have a time for 30 seconds to listen to the word of God. 30 seconds. Fabulous, you're going to listen to such sort of a huge sermons, what we are preaching every day for more than one year, for, for more than one hour. So Satan says, hell with that. Because you don't know, you have to give every day two hours, 40 minutes to the Lord God. So Satan says, who is having time? Look upon our schedule. <laughs> your day-by-day -day gathering of oil, like a wise virgin woman, into your lamps, is what 
the proof day by day which are gathering every day to pay saying that Lord here I am today also I'm coming O Lord to learn the word of Lord God make my path straight any hindrances because Satan always plans for hindrances there will be a lot of hindrances for me not to learn the word of Lord God at all Lord you plan you direct you make up that's what I've been called over here you make it up you make up the plan. But here I am, O oh Lord, lead me, guide me. Lord, consistently I have to be in fellowship with you. That's the test for you, dear brethren. That's the test of your integrity. That's the test of your faithfulness. Like Abraham when he compares, like Moses when he compares, like David when he compares. Are you faithful, even not to give your own son? So he said, you have been proven faithful. Now I know there is nothing between you and me in your heart that goes to hinder you. Moses, there is none a faithful servant like him in the entire house. David, a man after Lord God's own heart. In everything what you and I can do, dear brother, nothing. Simply get into the matters of the Lord's hand, as Moses did all the time. In Numbers 27, he never returns problem. What did Moses do? He taketh that to the hands of the Lord God, and Lord God directs the case. The direction is in the Bible. You know, people are perishing without reading the Bible. Why we are asking you to read the Bible? Because you people are not even able to make up to time to listen the word of Lord God. When you at least read or when you at least listen in the audio Bible format of the Word of Lord God, you can at least go to make up your life according to the consciousness being turned by the power of the Word of God through the working of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to transform you. For example, the Bible says every day you have to come to the church and we know very well people will not agree with this. But it's there in the Bible and the Bible says heaven and the earth will pass away but my words will abide forever. Then what are you going to do tomorrow? You would say, I haven't read it properly. I was a dim eye like the one who has been healed. First he puts upon him and he says, I look men walking like trees. In Mark chapter 8 it has to be. And then he would say a second time. Again he goes to spit. And then he cleanses him. And then he says, I can see men as men. You know the same thing over here. You may say to Lord, Lord, I could see not men as men, but I've seen men as walking as trees. No, dear brother, you cannot. The Bible says, every day take up your cross, come to me and do the will of Lord God the Father. People are not happy. Even on this Palm Sunday, when the people are celebrating it all the world, in Luke chapter 19, this account, what Lucan has given, he says over here in verse number 38, it ought to be, he says, And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way, from verse number 32. In verse 31, And if any man ask you, why do you lose him? Thus shall you say unto him, Because the Lord hath a need of him. So, and then they were sent, and they were saying, and found even as he said unto them, and as they were losing the called, the owner said thereof, Why shall you lose the called? And they said, you know, when Lord God the Father Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is going to give them the man that how they have to behave. He says over here emphasizing that when they ask you, the word say is called to be erao. That is when they utter, when they speak or when they make up the things pertaining to the standards of what we can call as with authority. If they would simply ask you, then he says that if they say or if they speak, then he said, you say unto them, because when they ask you, why are you taking it? The word why is called to be, because of what sake? <coughs> and the word over here, what we can look for, ask, is called to be eratao. That is to question or to request or to entreat. And the word what here we can look, thus you shall say, erao. Eratao is different from erao. That is, now you shall say with authority. They would ask you requesting manner, but you say with authority. 
and they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto him and as they were losing the call the men said unto them why you lose the call the word over here is said is called to be apo that is to speak you know these three things are very important arata o era o and apo arata o he said if they question you if they ask you era you speak with authority apo now they're simply asking in a very low manner that meant to say what the strength which lord god the father has given the authority which he has given for us is something far greater that's why he said if you have a mustard seed of faith even the mountain that is there on your path it will be thrown out of the way that's the power exuse your authority what satan can have the same he said i have given you something greater than that called to be the dunamis power in luke chapter 10 The same thing concluded in Second Timothy one seven, the spirit of Dunam is the spirit of Agape, the spirit of Sophro Nismos mind. So there is no excuse, not at all. You have any excuse? So dear brethren, the people are asking in Apo style. They're not asking in Eratao style, and then. So and they said now what they're doing they're saying in the style of apol they said the lord had need of him in the not much of harsh use of authority what they said in the same manner they replied if they've been eratao they would have been erao to talk to them and what does he meant to say now you have enough of authority there is nothing on the earth that can say no to lord to my lord and savior jesus christ to obey him Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Christ, the Lord of God, for the Lord of glory. In John chapter seventeen, in verse number six, when he prayed, "They have kept thy word," it's for the principle because you are given the power of Erao. The work is happening only at Paul. So now we look, and they said, "The Lord hath need of him," and they brought him to Jesus, and they cast the garments upon him. the called and they set Jesus thereon and as he went they spread the clothes in the way and when he was come nigh even now at the descent of the mountain of olives the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen and now saying blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the lord god peace in heaven and glory in the highest peace in heaven and glory in the highest and some of the pharisees from among the multitude said unto him master rebuke thy disciples the word rebuke is called to be epitimao and the meaning of that epitimao is nothing but their brethren to say to rebuke or reprove that meant to say what led them not to a structure to the viewpoint of your thinking and when he saw when uh, and and he answered in verse 14 and said unto them i tell you that if this should hold the peace if they would keep quiet the word called to be siopao that meant to say to be silent and the silent to meant to say to be quiet enough if they don't go to make up a wall of fortification the thought process to be renovated if they don't go to become then he would say immediately the stones would cry out the stones would cry out stones are presenting back again the word of lord god so what they do now they go to dig deep down in the view point of bible doctrine and they would say from the rising of the sun till to the going to not the sun what is the intention of lord god the father for giving us this word against any pressure in the view point from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun so that they're going to cry out in the view point of bible doctrine that's what they would immediately cry out they don't keep quiet the same thing what we have been said in for us isa chapter 60 lift up your voice and cry out it should be in isa 58 i think not 60 spare not he would say and the reason over here in isa chapter 58 when he would say spare not The word over here, sparing, is nothing but their brethren called to be kasak. That meant to say what? If you don't tell them if their bodies are not growing up into grammatiers, then they will be burning in the lake of fire. Then I will ask an account of you. The word kasak is what? Building up a wall of fortification. No matter what may be the pressure, they have to grow up into grammatiers in the presence of Lord God the Father. That's what you have been called to be sparing out. Don't spare them. Cry aloud. 
Kara, make it up the people to understand. Up to what extent you have to act a structure to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. Cry aloud, spare not, like a trumpet. The thought process in the viewpoint to be renovated as per Bible doctrine, so that you can show them Nage'ed, again the word, if you don't show, then there is no one who can show that in your generation. So show them their transgressions and the house of Jacob, their sins, the transgressions, what we can call as Pasha, the rebellion nature, because when Nafad opened up their mouth, the thought process is not the viewpoint of Bible doctrine, and the sins is called to be chatter, which they have missed the mark. So he says, show them those things. The same thing what he says over here in Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 19. He says over here in verse number 41, saying that this people in 40 the stones would immediately cry out stone is called to be lithos and lithos is nothing but your brethren if you can tell it is compared to what your body should be actual in the vigor and valor because it has to be all the time refined of a pure gold which is making up your thought process when you open up your mouth by digging deep down in the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic because lithos represents nothing but the word of God stones represents nothing but the word of God before the fire of the stones what we can look in Ezekiel chapter 28 the same thing in what we can look in Ephesians chapter 2 every time what you're having there you have nothing but the word of Lord God to be the priority every time you're having this stones immediately cry out meant to say what the person to whom the word of Lord God has given, they will cry out if your disciples are shutting out. And when he came near, they beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If you have known even the least in the things, thy days, the things which you shall be unto thee peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Because he says, If you have known even, the, even though, at least in these thy days, that means even in these last days, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they have hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that the enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round about and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another, because you knowest not the time of the visitation. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought. You know, this is the very thing important for us in the Pam Sunday. People may be saying that he has come upon the ass and they don't realize what he's doing over there. Saying unto them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him because, he says that, they could not find what they might do for all the people were very attentive to hear him. The word called to be ekremamai. The word ekremamai or kremenumai is nothing but your brethren called to say that they were bound together, kasher. And the meaning of the cashier is nothing but from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun. They want to look up on the thought process to be renovated as per the demands of the word of flood card. So they were bound up to listen. They were very attentive. Akra Numai. So from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, the thought process has to be renovated as per the demands of the word of flood card. That's what they've been called. Akra Numai. The thought process has to be renovated every day. That's what he says. And yet, dear brethren, people are not binding up today to know the word of Lord God. Because from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, if your thought process is not been renovated as per the word of Lord God, you haven't been binding to him. So now we look when he's entering there. The first thing he looks upon the city and he would say, at least now if we can have a chance to repent, but the time is gone from you now. Yet he cometh with a pain to teach them in the church, in the temple of the living Lord of a God, 
every day the things that which are pertaining to the Lord's mind accurately. At least that beast, that donkey, coming in the form of peace, it goes to give to you that you should learn and obey the will of Lord God the Father. But now, having the days of peace, reconciled with peace, expecting peace, you don't even come back and look upon the gate to perform the things what we can call in simple words peace with your body. You don't understand the reason of your body why God the Father has given you. Don't realize what is the meaning of this body why Lord God the Father has given for you. Your grammatious program to be disciple oriented every day. You don't have that. You don't realize that. You can't even think. So, dear brethren, he emphasizes the point for us. If you're not able to make up and inquire into the obligations, why are you not able to read the Bible? Then when will you grow up into grammatiers? If the disciples stop crying, he said, the stones will immediately cry out. And the stones representing the word of Lord God, they have been crying out to the pastor teachers to whom this bona fide gift has been given. Immediately to tell them, if your bodies are not digging deep down to the Lord's mind, they're going to fail. That's the word over here, what we can call crasso. What happens over here, dear brethren? They go on with the process of first making to dig deep down to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. They want to dig deep down. They want to make it up to be dig, dig, digging deep down. Cries all. And then he would say, furthermore, emphasizing the point, they would be saying to the process of what we can look over here, that they will be to the standards of no matter whatever may be the pressure, they will come to the viewpoint of rising from the sun, from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun by talking and looking upon the demands of the word of Lord God. That's what they will come out. And they will not stop for that. They want to come out and they will come for that. So dear brother, and he said, First, you would realize the word called to be za'ak, digging deep down to the viewpoint from the rising of the sun to the going of the sun, Bible doctrine. The second one called to be tasak, the word over here, what we can look, no matter what may be the pressure, the viewpoint of life from the rising of the sun to the going of the sun should be Bible doctrine. That's the word called to be tasak. And then the third one over here, what we can look, kara, crying out. So that from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun, your head has to be renovated as per the demands of the word of Lord God. So he said, stones will immediately cry out. And the meaning of that over here, dear brethren, he says for the stones to be something of a category in your body which will make up to be the vigor and valor. And then he would further say that will be of a pure, refined gold. <coughs> so that whenever you open up your mouth, it would be digging deep down into the standards of Bible doctrine. That's what the stone would do all the time. Therefore, we have been said, if anyone would listen to my words and build up his home, it will be on the rock, rock referring back to the stone, called as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, his every word is a rock, not on the mud. So he says you're going to dig out pure gold, refined pure gold. And that's what every believer should form in the image of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to be pure, refined gold in Christ. Pure, refined gold in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we ought to be. And yet, <laughs> you people are not able to come back and look into the blue color. 
Why is your body for? What's your body for? What else you will do with this body? What are you thinking? What will happen to your body as you age? You want to research and look? Without the word of Lord God, inculcation like a pure gold. Puss, what you can call, refined pure gold. Without renovating your thought process. For the demands of the word of Lord God, like a pure gold. You're going to perish. Your body will not even live half of the days designed for it. And though people may think we are worthy for Christ in the image of Christ, He has made us to be in God. Without realizing and understanding the will of Lord God the Father, your body will be seeking for vanity, vanities of vanities. Till you could come back to your senses like Solomon comes. And he goes to give and say, I give the conclusion for the entire mankind's fate. Obey God and keep his commandments. And if you're not able to do that, to obey God and keep his commandments, what's the purpose of you to have this body? At least the donkey was usable, called to be the cult. When he's entering, he says, If the disciples are keeping quiet, the things pertaining to the stones would immediately cry out. And when he came near, he beheld, get acquainted with the city, and he weeps. The word clao. And the meaning of the word Kla'a'o is again called to be Baka, or the same thing will be Bike, what we read, weeping and gnashing of teeth in Matthew 22. He weeps because the body is not Gramatia's program. And then he would say, if you had known even you, at least in these, in these thy days, the things which belong unto thy peace. You know, that's why you come to the church, to know the things that are going to be establishing peace with God. That's what we define. Success is nothing but what you speak, you do it. That's success. If you don't do it, what you speak, that's not success. So Christ, the Lord of God, said, do the things which I have told for you to do, that's success. So he says, the word peace, irony, called to be again the word shalom. What happens over here? Your thought process like a discipleship program in your blood. So he says, what the things that belong for you to be the peace? And now they are hid from thine eyes. The word concealed, crypto. Why they have been concealed? Because, first of all, you haven't made up of all the fortification to separate and use your body for discipleship program to the Lord God. Neither your body, neither your soul, neither your blood, neither your vigor and valor. And it goes to say further, because you're not having that, though you have been put in spite of great pressure, with authority to say you belong to Christ, renovate your head, yet you're going to say, no, I'm not going to be there, because against any pressure, no matter it ever come, my mouth or the things pertaining to the vigor and valor, he would simply say that these have been hid, 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 because he has not been interested for the things that which could be for peace. That's what mine is happening today. The crypto word, if you can look, he would emphasize first thing, he is withdrawn from the Lord God's plan. How? He would first build up a wall of fortification in his body to say, I will reject the word of Lord God. Thus, I will not come every day to learn the word of Lord God. And then when he's rejecting that, he's going to make it for a burial, the word called to be tamam. In his soul, in his blood, in his beginning valley, it will be absolute vanity. And then he would say, Sather, that is, he's been hiding and concealed because it will be like a mystery why he doesn't know, though he's having so much of pressure upon his body and his thought process not been renovated with authority. Yet he's going to say the reasons why he's not able to come because he says he's having a lot of business with the things pertaining to the earth rather than God. In spite of having pressure upon your mouth to open up your thinking in the vigor and of Bible doctrine, yet he doesn't come. So he said, these things are here. He says, For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass and round, 
and uh, compass round about uh, the compass the round and keep thee in on every side and they shall and they and shall lay thee even even with the ground and the children within thee and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another because you knew not the time of the visitation that means you are not ginasco you are not get acquainted with that and he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and the bought the word selling is called to be polio that means a part of system so what they're doing over here they are making up to makar that is their blood has been exchanged not for grammatical program the blood has been exchanged for rituals rather than reality their head is not been renovated as per the demands of the word of lord card so the soil the word called over here for us in the pole of the hebrew makar makar meant to say the blood is not at all for grammatical program neither the head has been renovated for grammatical program therein and them that the bought saying unto them is it not written my house is the house of prayer but you have made it to be a den of thieves the word thieves over here is called to be lasters and what is lasters we do dear brethren they called to be a troop band or a troop they never erect a structure to get every thought into captivity for christ these are the thieves over here and the den over here what it has become called to be spli i on and the word spli i on is nothing but dear brethren they make it up to be as mara because they never go to renovate your head thinking like a grammatical program to be mere in your head so he says now it has become like a den of thieves and what did you do now again he goes on to the same process what we have to do and didasco followed by the word with kata hamera daily he taught daily he taught didasco is nothing but your brother and if you can look lamat principle so that you're going to get a acquainted with that you're going to erect a structure to the teaching of bible doctrine so he taught daily in the temple but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do for all the people were very attentive to hear him the word very attentive is called kashar they're bound together from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun the thought process of them has been renovated as per the demands of the word of lord god that's what they did and that dear brethren many people are forgetting the intention of lord god the father in giving us his word that christ our lord of god has given us this grace to learn his mind come to look upon the entrance of the gate the four colors in that variable to look only the first color because if you don't confine yourselves to get separated from the world if you don't condemn yourselves and get the commendation of god then for sure dear brother your life can't have that true meaning what has been intended for us in this church So dear brethren which way you want to go you decide life is too short for us to spend our time in vanity and at last God the father has given us his grace to learn his mind one more day we shall be thankful and grateful for him because we have to renovate our thinking when Christ our lord our god wept looking upon that nation bk the same thing of matthew 22 in verse number 14 the same thing what we read in jeremiah chapter 13 his tears roll out the same thing in psalms 119 my tears roll out because lord they have forsaken your word they have not kept your word the same thing what we have here in jeremiah the same thing will be when lord god is weeping for us in the secret places you would say weeping in the secret places then how much more we can be happy as you can think at the cost of those shedding tears because the tears which lord god the father has been able to shed will cost our life he said over there in jeremiah chapter 13 in verse number 17 
but if you'll not hear it, my soul shall weep in the secret places for your pride, and my eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. So, dear brethren, how many days more? You want to make my Lord God to shed his tears. Now you make to grieve and squelch and wax and lie and resist the Lord God, the Holy Spirit. By not doing his work, giving your priorities for stupid things. Not inquiring into an obligation for why you are not able to read the Bible. And yet, your ignorance now to see Lord God is weeping on your behalf. Will make the time for you all to wait forever in the eternal lake of fire by gnashing of your teeth as well. Because you're not able to understand the true plan of Lord God the Father. So, dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short, and the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. And which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory. In his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So, with our head bowed, eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In the order to link Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the motive of you shall have the eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace must grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall not acquire the possession of the truth, that truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teaches the great master to carry to Sathan Logan. Herald the word in season out of sin because the diamond from my witnesses faith have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in Wellington E.T. for the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, nobody besides nature, then turn and look closely for witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the whole of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to be your brother and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, we are grateful and thankful for this great privilege, O Lord, to give into your fellowship through the Word. Father, what else do we desire all this earth, O Lord, that to know your mind and to work according to your will, so that you could be happy at least looking upon this generation where we are able to make up to see that your tears are not coming out. Eto Father, strengthen us more and more. Nothing but to do thy will, to be a great born slaves, prison born slaves of you. Our hands ready to do your work, our feet ready to be swift to your work, our heart and mind all the time willing to perform your work, our eyes always looking upon thee, and our ears, O Lord, always being attentive to your will and call. Help us, O Lord, to establish your word once again in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations where these people are not able to understand the importance of your word to be taught. Let the Lord have given us this vision to realize and to understand, Father, as David could come. Moses could come, we come unto the presence, humbly, O Lord, matter being laid down in your hands, you guide us, you lead us. We will be faithfully prepared and fit for it, O Lord, because your word is enough for us to perform it. And Lord, you have given us to perform it, and so we go ahead with the good work which will begin for us, in us, to be fulfilled till the day of your accomplishment. Help us and make our path straight, O Lord, to analyze and to reestablish once again in every church, according to thy mind to be taught, if the disciples keep quiet, O Lord, the stones will cry out. Help us to teach thy truth. Help us, the earth, to be filled with thy glory. Help us to live a life that which is pleasing unto thee and nothing else than that. Use us, O Lord, for your work. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, my Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and let him challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, so Lord. Amen.